What's up Grand Archive fans, it's Dan with Main Deck, and today I have a very, very fun video for you all because today I'm going to be joined by the one and only Red Zone Rogue for an online webcam gameplay session using a couple of our favorite competitive Grand Archive decks. And there's not just going to be one actually, there's going to be a second video. If you head over to Red Zone Rogue's channel as soon as you're done with this one, you'll be able to watch a second gameplay video over there featuring totally different decks and both games are really really awesome games of Grand Archive so make sure you head over there when you're all done and check that out. In the video on my channel today I'm going to be playing my favorite competitive deck right now which is Water Tenoris Allies where we're just going to be putting a bunch of allies on the board keeping pressure on the opponent and then we're going to use the power of things like Heavy Swing and Scepter of Lumina to deal a lot of extra damage and end the game while kind of protecting ourselves with some of Guardian's little tricks. So Kel will actually tell you in just a moment what he's going to be playing and then we're going to kick this match off. So hope you guys enjoy this one. Please stick around, check it out, let us know what you think in the comments down below and make sure you head to Red Zone Rogue as soon as you're done here and watch our game on his channel as well. How's it going, everyone? My name is Kel, also known as Red Zone Rogue, and I'm so stoked to be here on the main deck channel to play one of my favorite card games of all time, Grand Archive. Today, I'm gonna be piloting a Merlin deck. This is kind of like the, I don't wanna say standard, but this is a Fire Crux Merlin. We aim to win with our Majestic Spirit and Fireballs take advantage of Merlin's kind of insane ability to draw two cards every other turn, get that extra little bonus, and, and go to town. So that is the plan today. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun, and hey, maybe after this video, go over on my channel, Red Zone Rogue, and check out another game that Dan and I played with, well, go there and you'll see, you'll see what decks we played there. But until then, let's jam an excellent game of Grand Archive. But uh, so. currently, not not much. My uh, very average roll. I got a seven. I got a seven as well. Oh, okay. I didn't beat Zero. you by one this time. Uh, lower than average. I got a five. I got a three. You actually win. Ooh. All right. So I I will be going first. All right. Cool. All righty. Well, Spirit of Fier. I will go three, three, one. All right. Let's see if we got. Let's see what we got going on here. All right, that's not bad. That's a pretty good, pretty good turn one, I think. So we're just gonna jam out uh, Honorable Vanguard. One, two, and then I'm just gonna throw her into the fire. <laughs> I'm gonna gotcha. just cre cremation, yep. Uh, so Honorable Vanguard for those, if you're watching this and you don't really know a ton about Grand Archive, it's just a one, two with floating memory. Um, and then cremation ritual lets me sacrifice a uh, ally, and then I could draw two cards, and then puts this in my bin so I can have the floating memory, and then I could draw two cards. Draw two cards, very likely pass after that, but let me take a look. Yep, I'm gonna pass, go ahead. Excellent. Yeah, the classic uh, fire Merlin, just build your hand, turn one. That's what you wanna yep. do. Uh, we're gonna play Spirit of Water, and we're gonna go seven, and then one is our draw for turn. Bunch of Spirit over there, so we're just gonna put three down, and we're gonna play our Frostthorn Paladin. Oh, that's a good one. We're going to put another that's... three. We're not. It, it's a great card, uh, even without the on enter. Yeah, Don't I was going to say, that's the, that's the sad paladin. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, she's fine. She's happy. She She's loving life. <laughs> she's living her best life. It doesn't matter. We're going to play an esteemed knight who is also sad in a way because I'm not. I don't even have a warrior champion in this deck. It's no class good. bonus. Don't mind. That's pretty good. Uh, and then we'll be attacking for two and for two. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'll take four. All right, and yeah. Your turn. No, no right. cards in hand. Do whatever right. you want. I think this is a pretty easy just level up here, but let me take a look real quick. Yeah, I think we're just gonna go to Lorraine one, and I will just gonna grab it now. We're gonna grab the the Swayord of Seeking, and then we're gonna pay for Lorraine with the Honorable Vanguard that I put into their last turn. The sword has two durability on it. We're gonna recollect. Raw for turn. I think we're just gonna kill one of your dudes and maybe set up for another turn. So we're just gonna uh -huh. start with a uh, focused flames. Um, I'm gonna pay for it with one, two. Uh, 
doesn't matter. I'm going to basically kill both your guys, but we'll kill the, um, yeah, the, the Paladin. Sure. The Frostworn is like an esteemed knight, but doesn't have class bonus on intercept. She just yeah. has it instead. <laughs> uh, and then we are going to, yeah, I think we're just going to do a little bit of cleanup here. So, um, we're just going to run out a flame rune swordsman. Uh, for three, I'm just going to run the Swordsman into your two, three, and then I'll finish it off with uh, Lorraine. That'll do. Just kind of do a little bit of board board maintenance here. I have one card in hand, and I'm going to pass. Uh, we're going to go ahead and... Not that one. We're going to put out a Fire Resonance Bobble. Okay. Uh, we'll recollect and draw, and then... Uh, we're going to put three down, and we're going to play Gildas, Chronicler of Asa. Oh, that's pretty good. So... Uh, most people who are into Grand Archive know this card, but it is a 3-drop 1-3 one, three with uh, Balance, which is if you have the exact same number of cards in your hand and memory, she gets a buff, and hers is plus 3 power, which makes her pretty gigantic. Yeah, in, in um, Grand Archive, like a 4-3 for three, 3 is like insane, insane rates. Yes. How many cards do you have in your hand right now? I have 3 cards left in hand. Okay, okay, yeah. I think Gildas is going to attack Lorraine. Okay. Uh, take four. I've taken eight now total. That's right. And then I will pass the turn. Okay. Let's see. I didn't have to like activate the sword when I attacked. It's just like uh, but a, a weird reflex that I do when I attack with the weapons. I was like, ah, oh, tap it. You don't actually have to yep. do that. A lot um, of people like to do that. Yeah. In fact, it's actually very good to not do that because there are some weapons that you you actually need to activate and right you know like the um like the assassin dagger yep assassin's ripper yeah all right so let's see i think i'm actually gonna grab my crusader ring this turn so i'm just gonna get great grand crusader ring uh, i'm gonna go to recollect uh, draw ring's always good yeah i think i think this is not too terrible and uh, I think it'll help me set up for a little bit of a better turn later. All right, so um, I will attack um, Gildas for two with my swordsman. So I'm going to try something. It's a little gamble, but yeah, let's see. I think it might be good. Uh, I'm going to put down two and play Storm of Thorns. Oh, okay. What, what is this one? So Storm of Thorns is a guardian skill reaction that costs two and says if damage would be dealt to a unit you control this turn, prevent one of that damage. If the damage prevented had a unit as its source, deal one damage to that unit. Okay. So okay. on all my units, Gildas and my champion, we're going to prevent one damage from anything that would be dealt to them this turn. And if it was a unit doing like an attack, that unit's going to take one damage back. Interesting. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so this will deal one damage then to your unit and then this will take one itself. Correct gonna mark that with the the one die here okay all right so that, that that's uh that is interesting yeah it makes it so attacking with the sword is kind of pointless then i'm gonna crack my ring to see what i draw so if i have more options oh interesting okay i think we just kind of give up on trying to kill the gildas and uh we'll just kind of shield up a little bit so i have a, I have a stalwart shield mate here that makes so sense one two um I'm gonna play a hasty messenger. We're gonna go one, two, and then yeah, I guess she just wouldn't deal any damage, but I still would get the, the the trigger. Yeah, I mean, I'll uh, have hasty messenger come at. It doesn't really matter. Uh, come at your spirit. Let's just say uh, it, sure it won't deal any damage because one will be prevented. But I still get the on attack trigger. So I'm going yep. to I'm gonna discard this fast cure, which. Um, I have more cards than you, so that really wouldn't help me right now. Um, but I do get a draw a card, and it's floating memory, which is great. Okay. I'm just gonna pass the turn. Go ahead. Alright, at the end of your turn, I'm gonna pop this fire resonance bobble. I wanna know what I'm working with before I materialize anything. Um, I'm gonna go ahead with a Grand Crusader's Ring. Do I materialize? Sounds good. And recollect and draw. Uh, we're going to put three down. And would have been useful a couple turns earlier, but we're going to go ahead and play Lunette. So oh, Lunette yeah. is another balance ally. Lunette says, allies your opponent's control enter the field rested. 
And while you have balance, she has plus three HP, plus three health. So she is a one four. Well, nice. We you're, in, you're in. We do. Yeah. Are you currently in balance? Three and three. Yes. Oh, yep. Pretty good. Um, unfortunately, she only has one power, and yeah. that does not deal with stalwart shield mates. So I was really hoping to get something to deal with that, but uh, Gildas is just going to run right into that shield mate then. Very dead. What can you do? And Lunette is going to attack Lorraine for one. Yep, uh, I have nine damage now taken. And then I'll go ahead and pass the turn. Okay, let me think. Yep, all right. we're just going to, I think... I think my turn here, at least in terms of leveling, is pretty simple. I'm just going to go to Merlin 2 uh, and uh, use my two floating memory to do that. All right. And then Good I'm thing. going to... It's worth mentioning something, too. So you now have the ability to rest to banish cards from graveyards. And when you banish a card with floating memory, then uh, you get a level counter. Um, yes. Uh, and I want you to be aware... Uh, just run a webcam here. I do have Storm of Thorns in my graveyard, which has class bonus floating memory. So it currently is not a floating memory card. Okay, that's good to know. But I, but if you level up, I can I can eat it. Correct. Uh, Correct. I was actually yep. going to ask about uh, Storm of Thorns because I remembered it was like I'm pretty sure that has floating memory. Okay, cool. Let's just try to see if you have another Storm of Thorns. I'm gonna I'm gonna flame rune swordsman into Gildas for two. Uh, and I will Storm of Thorns. <laughs> okay, you do have another one. All right. Yep. Okay, so she'll take one. Flame Rune Swords one will take one. This would deal three, which would then deal two, which is enough to kill. Yeah, I'm just going to Fireball. Um, All right. I think we take those. We <laughs> Getting yeah. you to spend a Fireball to get rid of the Gildas. <laughs> I, I think I kind of have to. You've, you've already wasted like two cards protecting her. I'm like, I think it, it's a, probably yep. worth it in the long run. Uh, it's only going to cost uh, two because I am a I am a mage now, and I'm going to choose these two. I th think yes, I th think that's what we want. Storm of Thorns still active, so I can't really do damage unless it's more than one. Unfortunately, the Hasty Messenger doesn't do much unless I really want to to get that that filter effect or the loot effect, I guess you could call it. And I let me see. I kind of don't want to do the loot effect. So I think I'm just going to... I honestly think I'm just going to pass. Alrighty. At the end of your turn, I'll pop the Grand Crusader's Ring and we'll see what we are dealing with here. Alrighty. Let's materialize this time. I think we'll do a Tariff Ring. We're going to put... these three down. We're going to play a Gildas. <laughs> My god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep, that that attracts. Uh, Gildas is going to attack Merlin for four. Because I am balanced once again. Um, Let me think. I'm going to pay Brass Tax. I'm going to Resolute Stand. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay for it for three. Obviously, sure I choose, choose Merlin. Yes. But uh, I will end up right. taking so one. Gildas will hit you for one. Yep. And then, then I guess we'll just pass turn. I am at a tricky juncture now. <laughs> um, see, the ideal situation here would be to be able to eat one of his floating memory to get a level counter on Merlin uh, and then level up to Merlin three. So I'd draw two cards, basically, because it would get him an additional level counter and then I would draw because I have even number. But because... He doesn't have anything with floating memory, and I don't have anything with floating memory to eat. That is not going to happen. So, I need to look at other options. And what are the chances he's got a third <laughs> Storm of Thorns? <laughs> like, nah, screw it. Level three. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. All right. We're just, we're just going to do it. I could have some pretty bad hits in here. So, like, because I played Resolute Stand... Um, from hand, I, I did put some cards in here that I would very much like to not get banished, but uh, here we are. You know what? I we'll see. I like I like living dangerously. I too All like right. to live dangerously. Yeah, uh, one to five, reroll six. That is a five. Oh wait, no, hold on. Uh, we're banishing uh, 
Uh, uh, three. We're vanishing three. So uh, what we'll do? Uh, so we'll say this is one. Oh, whatever I did. Right, so we'll vanish that um, one to four. Reroll. Uh, five and six. So one. And then one to three. Reroll. Five. Three. Okay. All right. Let's see. We got all right. One of the ones Ooh. I did not want to hit. All right, yep, I'm happy Majesty. to see that one. Happy to see Blanche. That. Okay. Blanche is not bad. All right. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's the worst. No. That's, Cal, it's the other two. one. Oh, yeah, I had two. Oh, no. So I had kept one in hand, right, and played the other one down. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't mind if I banish one. Um, but now banishing both, not great. Not great. Um, all right. Well, that that is that is it is what it is. Uh, at the beginning of recollection phase, we will put a level counter. We'll do red. Um, and then if there's an even number of level counters, I get a draw card and her attacks get plus two. Uh, there are now an odd number, so I do not get that. So I'll go recollect and then draw for turn. See if you have a ghost to build back up now. Well, that would be very nice. That would be very yeah. nice. <laughs> and you know what? Maybe we do. Let's find out. I want a hasty messenger. Uh, actually... Yeah, I'll, I'll hasty messenger out. into Gildas. Uh, I will do the effect. I'm going to discard this Blanche to draw a card. Into Gildas. Whoops, I put the wrong thing. There we go. One on Gildas. And I would I, I, I would like to attempt to kill Gildas again. <laughs> Attack it for two. You you can have it this time. Yes, let's go. <laughs> two, two Gildas down. Um... See what we got going on here. I'm just gonna pass from there. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so I chose not to pop the terraforming that time because once I saw you level, I kind of moved to a different game plan. The end of your turn, I'm gonna spend two and I'm gonna fracturize my terraforming. Ah. Okay. Okay. So this is gonna give me a floating memory next turn, which will help me in starting to develop a little little bit more damage coming back at you, um, and it'll give me a card to work with as well as I'll start using some of these cards. Um, I have now I now feel pretty safe to level because you have moved past Lerl Merlin level two. This is a hand where I just had a lot of floating memory and I really didn't want that to become a bit of a liability. So this deck doesn't really care if it stays at level one anyway, or level zero for a long time. So yeah, especially no against deal. my deck. Like I'm not really pressuring you with aggro or anything. Um, right. My deck's more of like a, you know, late game combo kind of kind of deal. So what I'm going to do is start by actually spending that floating memory to materialize a Scepter of Lumina. Ah, yeah. Okay, so Scepter of Lumina uh, will make it so you take four damage every time that I level up. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. I will then recollect and draw. Let's go this route, I guess. We'll uh, reserve the Tariff Ring, and then put two more cards down in order to play a Snow Fairy. Oh, okay, cool. Snow Fairy is on enter, going to choose Flame Rune Swordsman. Flame Rune Swordsman will not wake up for as long as I control my 1-2 Stealth Snow Fairy. Cool. I'll put a little thing to just to kind of denote that. And then Snow Fairy and Lunette are both... Well, I guess I'll do... You have a bunch of cards in hand. I'll, I'll, Snow Fairy will attack your Hasty Messenger. Um, uh, no effect, so it'll take one. Okay. And Lunette will also attack Hasty Messenger. Okay. And I'm not currently um, balanced, but Lunette is just a 1 1. Yeah. That will also. That will also happen. Yep. So okay. chill out. Perfect. Then I will pass the turn. Yeah, I, I took a, a big hit to my resources uh, leveling up to Merlin. Um, only three cards in hand. There, there's some potential things, but. Um, you have to build it back up now. You you have a little bit of time because 28 health is a lot. Yep, 28 health is, is a lot. And I will be getting, you know, extra levels every single turn. So it, it does help. You know, it does, it does add up over time. I could just grab a, a, a zero cost here. And th that's that might be the plan. Uh, and it might be good to just kind of, um, you know, set up, you know, set up a little bit of a wall here as I kind of level up and prepare to prepare my late game. So I think I'm just going to grab a Terraf Ring. Yep, good call. And then I'm just going to, um, um, beginning of recollection, uh, Merlin goes to two, and I will draw a card. 
And then her attacks also have plus two for the turn. And then I will go to my draw step and then draw a card. It's one of the reasons why Merlin is so great. Like just drawing two cards every other turn is pretty. It feels pretty good. Yeah, it feels great. She's she's probably my favorite champion level. Just feels so good to have in play. I, it was like I, I was telling Dan earlier, but like going from like Xander to Merlin, this is before Xander was really good. Uh, before going from Xander to Merlin just felt like night and day. I was like, oh, this this is what I've been missing. Like, um, <laughs> right. It's just like it just feels so nice. Um, so I'm going to then finally cash this this uh, uh, swordsman in. I'm going to go ahead and cremation ritual him. Um, Makes sense. He's just kind of like sitting around and not not even attacking anymore. This one. So I'm going to do three. Keep that one in hand. So uh, sacrifice him and draw two cards. One, two. All right. Um, Merlin does have plus two attack this turn. Uh, but it's not super relevant because your Lunette is a one one still, right? Yes, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm just going to swing at her. Swing yeah. at her? Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. She's that got cashes in the sword. Which is relevant. Uh, having the sword in banishment uh, helps for <laughs> if I draw another one. Um, Incarnate Majesty. Oof. I'm hoping you don't. That's <laughs> that's uh, my biggest fear this game now, is that I can't kill you before you find another Incarnate. Yeah, there's there's two big finishers in this deck uh, that even, you know, he's only a spirit, so it's not unheard of. Uh, there's Fireball. I'm running Fireballs, as well as yep. the Incarnate Majesty. So I could, could potentially do like a burn route, but... Uh, I'm just going to pass. Go ahead. All righty. Uh, I am going to, let's see, wake everything up. And then during materialize, I'm going to spend my, uh, sorry, one of these two cards is what I need to spend. Um, so we're going to spend one of these two and we're going to level up to Tony level one. So I'm paying the cost one, two, three, four, five, six, four, five, six. And I hit the card I didn't want to hit, unfortunately. So there goes dungeon guide. Welcome to the club. Yep, yep, yep. So it's fair. Fair on both sides. Yeah. <laughs> I should have put my cards down differently. That was that was on me. So Tenoris enters. Two things happen. The Scepter of Lumina is going to deal four damage to your champion. Yeah, so uh, 14. And Tenoris is going to have taunt until the beginning of my next turn. Must hit Chad in face. Yes, exactly. Uh, then we will go ahead and recollect and draw. So Snow Fairy will... Uh, oh, sorry, at my Recollect phase, did you want to use your Terra Fring on my Snow Fairy? <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> okay. Make sure. Tempting, uh, tempting, but... Yeah, Snow Fairy will attack for one. Oh, yeah, I'm uh, 15 now. I think I'm actually just going to pass. Pass turn. Okay. Um, I think I'm just going to do this EOT with for no value. I was been telegraphing it. It's difficult over webcam. Um, like for the cards, I'm looking at a screen on my laptop and I'm just seeing like a, you know of a black square for the cards in hand. So I'm like, I don't right. actually know how much, uh, but I think I'm just going to run this out just to have the floating memory. Unfortunately, I will not heal. Uh, I'm going to fast cure. My influence is is five. Yeah. And so yeah. it's also five. Nothing happens, but that is one more card in my, um, that I can use for floating memory, which is relevant because I think um, it's a little aggressive, but I think, I think I'm going to do the prismatic edge. So, I'll do Prismatic Edge, um, paying for it with two floating memory. And uh, I would okay. I will reveal the cards in my hand. You have you're going to see my secrets. Yes, let's see. I do have double have I do have double fireball in hand. Double fireball. There we go. And a so resolute I would stand, like, a mask here, and a disintegrate. Yes. Uh, the most relevant, especially for this turn, is the the double fireball here. Uh, since a fire element with card was real, I'll choose three damage to uh, Tony's face. And I will uh, begin recollect, go to level three, uh, or three counters, level six total. Uh, so re recollect, draw, and you've taken, you've taken three. You know I have two fireballs. Two fireballs without any shenanigans isn't quite enough to get there. Because I can do, let's see, on board I can do three, I'll take you to six. And then I can fireball you for 14. Actually, that might be enough. Because Tony, enough. what? I have 20. Yeah, 20, 20 yeah. I forget, uh, Tony, level. I thought you were level two for some reason. I was like, no, he's got, he's got more health. Um, well, we're going to give it a shot. You might have some shenanigans. So let's see if you have shenanigans. You have a full grip. We're going to start off 
by just uh, attacking with the prismatic edge for three. Okay, we'll take three. Okay. Uh, this gets banished because it only has one durability. And then let's see if you're running Blanche, I guess. I would like to fireball you for seven. Fireball for seven. Um, and we have another fireball coming in hand as well. Yep, I have three three cards in hand. Yep, I'm going to uh, reserve my Terra Fring and put one down. I'm going to Diffusive Block uh, to just prevent the next two damage that would be dealt to Tony this turn. So I'm only going to take five from that. Ooh, okay. Oh, interesting. Okay, hmm. Let's see, does that change what I do? Uh, cards in hand? Three. Well, Fireball is a fast spell, so I'm just going to pass the turn. Go ahead. Okay. I will wake up. Let's see. So we're going to go up to Tony level two. We're going to banish the Diffusive Block and one of the Storm of Thorns. Uh, and Scepter of Lumina will trigger and deal four damage to you. Yep, 19. Tony's uh, next attack this turn gets plus three damage. So hopefully he can perform one. Yeah, yeah. All right. And we'll recollect and draw. All right, so um, I guess I can only do this during your recollection. So during your recollection, oh, um, sure. see how many cards do you have in your hand total? So if it's during recollection, I still have three cards in hand. Okay, so three cards. Yes. Um, All right, I should have given you the opportunity. I forgot it was out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I will do the ring this turn. Yeah. Okay. So, All right. for those of you watching, uh, the tariff ring just makes it so that uh, until the end of turn, uh, it costs some two uh, cards, basically, to, to attack. Well, if you didn't do that, I won the game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you did that means I, alas... I will not be winning this turn, at least. Um, I'm one, as usual, as we talked about earlier, I'm one card short in that case yep. of being able to win the game here. So I, we, we, I think we mentioned that in one of the, the the other games. It's probably on my channel. I think I think that we mentioned that in the game that's on yes, my channel. It probably was said on the one on your channel. Yes. Uh, yeah. So actually, Snow Fairy is just going to vibe. She doesn't care. Um, I'm just going to pass the turn. OK, um, and then let's see what four cards in hand now. Five cards in hand. Five. I think I'm going to do this now then. Uh, I have another fast cure, so I, I will have only four. So I'm going to heal for four. Well, hang on. OK, I, I, I'm that. playing this from hand now. You, you have a response. Yeah. I think I have to do this. Uh, I'm going to Frostbind. Oh, okay, yeah. The card. And that, I mean, that actually puts me at the same influence as you, so even if you were to be able to pay the two somehow, you still wouldn't heal. But it's going to get banished instead. Yeah, so I, I, I don't get the floating memory. It's pretty good. Yes. And then, uh, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that, 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 that is quite good. Um, let me see what I have in my memory here. And whether I want to risk getting the Drawn Blade and then... Banishing the fireball would be make me very very sad. So I'm just gonna grab. I'm just gonna <laughs> grab the, this great sword. That makes sense. Um, uh, on enter doesn't do anything because I don't have any allies to target. But it is just gonna be uh, another sword to have, which is not terrible. Uh, beginning of recollection, we will go up to four. Uh, that will trigger. She, so she gets plus two for the turn, and then also I get to draw a card, and then we will recollect, uh, and then I will draw another card. Well, let's just see if you have any effects. So we'll, we'll just start out slow, and test the waters. Um, I'm gonna attack you with the greatsword. I will take three. Okay, greatsword gets banished. I have three swords in my banishment. I think at this point, I don't go for it. And I think we just play for a little bit later. It's a little risky because I don't think I can kill you this turn. I think it's even if you had nothing in hand, I don't think I could I could do it. Um, I, I'm going to play this uh, shield mate here. We're going to go one, two. And I really don't want to have to do this, but I, I don't know if I can take the extra four 
from your... I don't think I can take the extra four from your... Uh, staff. My scepter, yeah. Yeah, um, so I think... I'm gonna... Crap. I'm gonna play to my outs and not be greedy. I'm gonna play one card down, and I'm gonna disintegrate the... The scepter. Destroy target ally or regalia. Um, I, I think actually, knowing that you only have one in hand, if you don't mind, I'm just going to frostbind the disintegrate. Ah, I see. Hmm. Yeah, I can't pay for it. So, yeah, that, that happens. I really should save the frostbind for the fireball, but I'm I want to be able to kill you here. And I think I need to do that. I'm going to materialize bulwark sword. Okay. And then recollect. That's the one that is that the one that attacks for two. Yes, it's a two power, two durability. It's plus one for guardian. I just cost two to use every time. Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, spend two to attack your stalwart shieldmate with the bulwark sword. Yeah, I am. I am gonna. I'm gonna stand the shieldmate. Yep. Sounds good. Then uh, I will pass turn. Okay. Cool. I I do not draw. Uh, so I'm keeping that in mind. Um, materialize. Whew, it's a rough one. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get the drawn blade. Um, unfortunately, I am gonna have to pay that pay for that. So there's a one in three chance that we hit the uh, hit the fireball here, which currently is my only out right now. Um, so here we go. Um, we're gonna go two, four, six. Okay. In fact, let's roll a die that's a different color just to let's see. That's a six. All right, here we go. Oh, cool. Okay. Honorable Vanguard. You did it. Yep, you saved it. One and three. Uh, so on enter, I will draw a card. Um, at the beginning of recollection, we will go up to level or five counters. Uh, yep. Then I will recollect and I will not draw for turn because of resolute stand. Yes. Um, that is very, very relevant to, to what we're doing here. Fortunately for you, I did not draw the, the Incarnate Ooh. Majesty. All right, all uh, right. Which which would have been very nice. It, it would have been free, right? It was five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, it would have been it would have been free, but uh, I did not draw into it. So given that, I try to put you at one. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's good either. Is this a fast spell? Is this a slow spell? Oh man, I think we just pass. Keep my hand. I think we just pass and then try to weather the storm and hopefully don't die. I'm just go go ahead. Okay. Uh, I am going to materialize Tenoris Genesis Aegis using yep. the Storm of Thorns. Big and Tony. These two cards: Gildas and Corhazi Trapper. So now uh, Tony has of the scepter of thirty. Yeah, uh, he has thirty indeed. Because of the scepter of Lumina, you're going to take four. I go to 23. At the start of my recollection step, I get to create an obelisk of some kind. Um, Please don't and... smash me with the obelisk. Okay. It's just going to be obelisk of protection that I'm going okay. to. Uh, Is this the one that create? prevents damage? Yes. So it cost me three resources right now total to prevent the next two damage that we dealt to target unit this turn. It's, it's one less for each domain I control. All right, yeah, yeah, uh, I mean, that's first. important. Yes, uh, preventing damage is is the game right now for sure. Yeah, yep. Um, okay, generate that or uh, summon that, and then I will draw for turn. Yeah, I feel like this is really, really close either way. I, I feel like this is like on a razor's edge kind of really, situation. It really is. Um, let's yeah. spend two, and we will use the bulwark sword to hit the stalwart shield mate for three. Let me take a look at my hand. Bulwark sword. Yeah, that happens. Another resolute stand would have been really sick. <laughs> that would yeah, have been unfortunately, good. unfortunately. Uh, Snow fairy will attack Merlin for one. Uh, yes, twenty-four. And we'll send it to you and see what you can do. Sixteen damage to go. Whew, okay, I do have some outs. Um. There are some there are some lines that I have not drawn a single ghosts yet. So there I could have yeah. a line where I ghosts into more stuff. 
Like a ghost would yep. go crazy. Like ghosts drawing into fireball would be so much damage. Um, ghost would be hot. So I've not done a single. There's four in this deck. Um, so we'll see. I'm, I'm just going to... Let me see. Um, I might as well do it now while I have the floating memory. This, this could actually save me. So recently... Maybe sort of recently, um, Crystal of Empowerment got banned, right? And so I had it in this deck originally, and I was like, "What do I want to replace it with?" And this, I, I, I swapped this before we got, uh, we saw Nationals or anything. So the card that I actually swapped it with could save me in this situation. Okay, uh, it is the Orb of Hubris. Ooh. Um, so uh, I will pay for oh, that. No. Banishing oh no! Oh no! Okay. The shield knight. Yep. Yeah. So Orb of Hubris says, "Banish Orb of Hubris. Draw up to three cards." Then shuffle that amount of cards from my hand into my deck. So it just basically helps me dig. I can, I can dig five cards this turn. So that's I don't kind of, like hearing that. Wow, that's really good right now. Holy cow. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, so we're going to do this. Uh, I'm Merlin in danger. is going to go to six uh, level counters. I will draw a card and she gets plus two for the turn. So draw a card. Um, and then I will draw a card for the turn. Hmm, interesting. All right. All right. How many cards do you have in your hand? Two. Two cards in hand. Not enough. Yeah, not enough to uh, counter me because you have Correct. used your fractal. Correct. Um, I think we're just going to jam this orb immediately and see what we get. Okay. So we're going to do this. Orb of hubris. Draw three cards. One, two, three. Hmm. Well, we have the potential to dig for more, but it's not exactly great. So we're going to put that one back. We are going to send that one back. And then finally, which one of these do I care about the least? This one. Send this one back. Um, and these just go on the bottom, right? Shuffle that amount for my... Oh, you shuffle it. Okay. Yep. All right. I just just assumed from playing so much like magic and stuff. I'm like, oh, it's on the bottom, right? No, shuffle yeah. it in. All right. I, I, I like playing risky, but I think I'm going to play safe because I think just running out another shield mate might buy me the time that I need. Uh, so I'm going to shield mate on. two down. <laughs> and and I, I hate doing this as well, but I think I'm just going to kill your fairies just so you can't exact me. I probably shouldn't do this, but I am going to focus flames your fairy for... For four, yep. sure. Um, and then I'll okay. I, to to lower the gap a little bit more. I am just gonna smash you for three with my with my drawn blade here. I'll take three. All right. I literally have no hand now. I'm all on board. It, it's your go. Shil that's I'm literally my my life is behind is <laughs> behind this tiny little shield. The shield mate saved you. Yeah, oh. I, that, that was. I, uh, the greedy line was going for the draw, and then this was the safe, the safe line. If I didn't have the shield mate, by the way, I, I definitely would have done the, done the draw. Uh, I'm gonna materialize a nullifying lantern. I don't know if it has any impact on you. It does if you try to crux sight something. I guess I don't even know if you run that, but um, um, spoilers. It, it won't matter. It won't matter. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's fine. <laughs> I just have nothing better to do anyway. I'm going to put out obelisk of fabrication, which uh, is pay six rest summon an automaton drone with a buff counter on it it costs one less for each domain so currently it's cost four and the obelisk of protection is two to activate now nice uh and then i will recollect i think right so six four one two yeah yeah recollect and draw i'm gonna pass turn all right all right not dead okay all right, I don't think I materialize. No, nope. I mean, I have one card left in the material deck, and you can probably guess as to what that is. Um, we are going yeah, to not go... Not too hard to guess at this point. Yep, we're going to go to seven uh, odd numbers, so I do not draw the extra card. We will recollect. Come on, draw. Okay, that's not the worst. It's not great either. Um... I'm going to ask you this every single turn, though. How many cards do you have in your hand? I have four cards in my hand now. Okay. Should I just do it now or later? Does it matter? Hmm. I'm just going to do it now. I'm going to fast cure. So I will have three. Yep. That's pretty good. 
Okay, cool. Uh, uh, does it yep. resolve? It's, it's, uh, well, wait, actually, three. Hold on. Maybe I can, maybe I should do this. Let me do math. Let me do math. Um, I think, I think, I, I think I just figured something out. Okay. Um, Big click. A, a potential line, and I haven't done all the math, but it's close enough. So, okay. uh, okay. it resolves. Yeah. It resolves. Okay. It resolves. Okay. All right. Yep. So I go to, I go to 20. So I have eight, eight health remaining. Um, and with that, I have one card in hand. Uh, I'm going to pass the turn. Go ahead. At the end of your turn, I'm going to uh, rest this and place four down to activate Scepter of Lumina to banish okay. it to draw two cards. Okay. 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 You draw then... two, <laughs> two, two threes. <laughs> Uh, no, actually, two Fracture Eyes, <laughs> which oh, is okay. um, super Worse. useful right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to ready Terra Fring. During the Rock Action step, I will place Obelisk of Armaments out. Cool. You got, you got them all now? I got them all. I collected the Obelisk Exodia. Right, yeah. Then, so we need to deal eight damage. Yep, eight um, and kill my shield mate. And kill the shield mate. Yes, both of those need to happen. Yeah, because I. So you have the obelisks, right? One of them makes a three-one sword. The other one can make a two-two. So the two-two can clear the shield mate for sure. If that's the route you want to take, they're all. Uh, I'm commenting we for have, the the viewers at yes. home. They're all they're all reduced by uh, three. The cost. Or five, six, seven. I'm going to rest my Terra Fring and place two cards down to activate Obelisk of Fabrication to create an automaton drone with a buff counter. Sweet. Then I'll recollect. So that was during my recollection step. Now I recollect and draw. Then I will place, since this, is, I, this costs five and I have three domains, I'm going to put two cards down to activate Obelisk of Armaments to create an Aura Steel Greatsword. Nice. And for, for those of you at home, that's a 3-1 that's a three one, three one sword. 3-1. Three 3-1 one. Three one sword. Automaton Drone attacks Stalwart Shieldmate for two. I'm going to play... Nah. Uh, no, I man. Oh, man. Oh, I, if I, you had it, Kel. No. I, I, there are still two in the deck. So, But unfortunately, I don't, I don't have it. So, yep. You got, you got it. Because now... I get to pay four to play heavy swing using oh, no. Aura Steel Greatsword to deal nine damage to you. Oh no. Um, that's more than I have life. Um, that is. <laughs> oh no, wow. You got it. You got it. That line, that line was so tricky to find to pop the scepter of Luminate. It was, it was realizing that if I used the scepter, the two cards would be able to activate one of the obelisks that put a threat on board because I needed to put down two threats and get the swing off to get through eight the eight damage that I needed to deal after the fast uh, cure. It was wow, that was that tricky was, to figure that out. Was very, that was very close. Um, I think one of the, the deciding things early on was banishing both of my oh, Incarnate yeah. Majesties from hand. If you had um, either of those, like it was game over for me. I was I was never getting through the the deal. It, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and in hand, uh, just so you can see the rest, is at a hasty messenger and of wreck and acolyte. So at one point, I, I was like, "This is the card, by the way, that could dig. It only digs one." Um, sure. But doing that, I wouldn't have enough to play this and the shield mate in the same turn. I only had uh, five cards in hand. Um, so I was like, I think the shield mate was the safer play, and then just naturally dig just by drawing cards. Um, since it seemed like you were having difficulty dealing with the shield mate. Um, I sure was. <laughs> and yeah, just in terms of raw fireball damage, uh, I'm, I'm level 10 now, and I needed to deal um, uh, thir 13 damage to kill 13. you. So that was uh, two more turns, because fireball would deal 11 now, and then 12, and then 13. Um, yeah, it was it was insanely close, and I was uh, that's mostly because I was blessed by you having some very unfortunate banishes early on um, yeah. when you got so, pressured to go to level three. So let's see all the ghosts. Of, oh, so the incarnate majesty we have, we have, other, you shouldn't look at their cards, but I always like just, yeah. just to see. <laughs> um, oh my God. All of the ghosts were like in a clump. There's like three, there three in are. a clump here. And I was like a couple cards away from the, the man majesty. Um, uh, yeah, but no, no ghosts, no, uh, no incarnate. 
It was a good. It was a really good match. It was really close. Um, it was a good game and had a lot of a lot of interesting decision points. The thing I the thing I love about Grand Archive, I just can't get over, is just how many of those come up in these these intense games, especially when they grind out like this. Um, it's it's yeah. It's just it's always it's always a treat in the tank for a long time sometimes to come up with some kind of weird lines but it's those weird lines the utilization of the recollection step all that kind of stuff that's uh when i when that happens i just get pumped it's super super exciting to me so thank thank you for the game cal great game <laughs>